another concept uh, of the circulatory system that is your cardiac cycle now what are we going to cover in cardiac cycle in cardiac cycle we'll be covering the events that together bring about the contraction and relaxation of the heart in order to circulate the blood throughout your body and again get it back and how long this is going to last and what are the controlling factors of the cardiac cycle and uh, what is heartbeat what is pulse this is exactly what we are going to cover so in short you can say we are going to cover the mechanism of the heartbeat and what is cardiac cycle we are going to see look into it now actually when we talk about cardiac cycle so it is definitely a cyclical event of one relaxation and a contraction relaxation of what relaxation and contraction of what naturally we know that the heart has four chambers the auricles and the ventricles so the relaxation and contraction is with reference to the walls of the auricles as well as the ventricles now whenever there will be a phase of relaxation we call it a diastole and whenever it is contraction we call it systole and basically the heart beats that you hear that is actually the pumping of the uh, blood by the heart that is because of this continuous relaxation and the contraction and the sound produced is somewhat this the lub dub sound and uh, generally you are asked that why the sound is produced what happens exactly because of which this sound is produced inside your heart so we'll be focusing on that thing also now let me explain you the mechanism of the heartbeat that constitutes the entire cardiac cycle okay now as i said that it comprises of the systole and the diastole the first event that exactly takes place we had covered that thing in your uh, double circulation also the auricles get filled the auricles are filled up now once if this auricles get filled up then naturally the pressure is being exerted on the walls of the auricles and simultaneously at that time the bicuspid and the tricuspid valves they are closed because of the pressure and this phase is naturally the relaxation phase of the auricles and we call it atrial diastole this phase is called the atrial diastole auricles or the atria hence the relaxation phase that is the atrial diastole after this then the blood will definitely go down into the ventricles now that is again because of the contraction of the auricular walls and after this what happens the ventricles get filled up valves are open the bicuspid and tricuspid valves are open and the ventricles are right now in a relaxed stage so i can say that this is called your ventricular early ventricular diastole and result of atrial systole because of atrial systole that is the contraction phase the auricles were contracted they sent the blood down into the ventricles the ventricles got filled up and as a result of that thing what happened the valves are also open and at that time the ventricles are getting filled and now the heart is ready to pump the blood from the ventricular from the ventricles to the exterior part of the heart that is one it will go through the semilunar valve through the pulmonary artery to the lungs for oxygenation and another will directly take the oxygenated blood out of the heart for circulation systemic circulation through the outer so after this ventricles contract 
semilunar valves are functional at this time to allow the blood to pass through and this is called a ventricular systole so i hope it is clear we took it in a simple format in which the entire thing we saw that how uh, the auricles got filled up and the bicuspid tricuspid valves they close at that time and uh, this is your atrial diastole phase then due to contraction of the auricles auricular walls the ventricles get filled up the valves that were present over there they become functional at that time and that is your atrial systole because of which the contraction took place and then the early ventricular diastole in which the ventricles are getting filled up and they are completely relaxed stage then the ventricular systole takes place in which the ventricles contract and the seminal valves become functional allowing the entire blood content present in the heart both oxygenated blood in the left ventricle and deoxygenated blood in the right ventricle to move out of the heart in the respective directions so basically how many stages did we study over here we studied four stages one was your for the auricles or the atria that is your first was your diastole systole then for your ventricles again we saw that it had two phases that is your diastolic phase and the systolic phase i hope this is clear now what happens exactly over here is how much time in total it takes but before we understand that the total time it takes the entire cardiac cycle the heartbeat rhythm takes we have to understand one stage exists in which simultaneously both the auricles and the ventricles they are in complete relaxation phase and that phase is called the joint diastole phase and let me tell you it is the longest phase in your entire cardiac cycle it is the longest phase now how long does it last 0.4 seconds exactly the entire cardiac cycle comprising of all this diastolic and systolic phases it is total of 0.8 seconds and single handedly this joint diastole in which both the auricles and the ventricles are in diastolic phase in the relaxed phase that is your 0.4 seconds okay i hope this part is clear about the mechanism now coming to this heartbeat as we had discussed earlier the lub dub sound that is produced lub sound is produced because of the uh, closing of the bicuspid and tricuspid valves whereas the dub sound is produced because of the closing of the semilunar valves now what is this heartbeat and how is it produced we know heartbeat we have uh, in a normal human heart it is uh, 72 times per minute on an average scale and uh, what controls uh, this heartbeat the heartbeat can be controlled in two ways one is your neurogenic method and another one is a myogenic method neurogenic means the heartbeat is under the control of some nerve cells and again you will see this in case of some insert i uh, mean so uh, analytes basically and when it comes to myogenic myogenic means there will be certain regions in the muscular walls of the heart that are going to control the heartbeat and this is generally seen in case of your humans or in a broad category let me say mammals and again a broader category that is mainly all the vertebrates okay so this is how the heartbeat is controlled now if i say that it is myogenic myogenic means again region specific in the walls muscular walls of the heart that is your sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node now sinoatrial node again location it is located at the extreme corner of the uh, topmost corner of the right auricle and atrioventricular node is located at the extreme co topmost corner of the right ventricle now what is the exact function of sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node now if this is your sinoatrial node and this is your avn now what happens sinoatrial node sends electric impulses over here 
to the walls of the auricles from here these waves are transmitted to the avn from avn actually uh, some branch of nerve fibers they originate which are basically called the bundle of his together till here it is bundle of his from here once they start dividing or getting separated into the respective walls of the ventricles they become your perkins fibers so i'll uh, write it down to make it easy for you to take down in your copy this part is your bundle of his and this is your perkins fibers so what is the function they help in transmission of the impulses to the uh, entire ventricular muscular walls okay now that's why we call sinoatrial node as the natural pacemaker it is the natural pacemaker means it maintains the pace the rhythmicity of the heartbeat whereas avn is called the pace setter this is the basic difference whatever signals san or sinoatrial node will give that Uh, instruction will be picked up by avn to give it to the walls of the ventricles that is overall the concept of your heartbeat then what is your pulse <clears throat> pulse is actually uh, you can say that it is somewhat similar in the count as it comes to heartbeat but we determine it by uh, placing our hand or your fingertips on the particularly radial artery of present in the wrist the radial artery it directly comes from your heart and it is actually very thick and over there the movement of the blood it exactly similar to that of the heart beats in on an average basis per minute so overall you can get exactly the same number uh, while feeling the pulse as you get it in the stethoscope okay now what happens if uh, sinoatrial node that is the natural pacemaker is affected somewhat it is not working properly in that case another device is inserted that is called your artificial pacemaker now this artificial pacemaker will actually uh, provide electrical signals impulses to the walls of the uh, heart by the help of which the entire heart gets its uh, stimulus to go on be um, beating and maintain that rhythmic contraction and relaxation inside it so that's all about your cardiac cycle the heartbeat how uh, what type of it is neurogenic myogenic the mechanism that governs the maintenance of the cardiac cycle and the performance of the heartbeat that is your systole the diastole then the what is joint diastole again a very important question which is always covered in uh, most of the exam papers and then you have pulse so i hope this thing is clear to you if you have any questions then do ask in the comment section and uh, for more uh, suggestions uh, it is definitely welcome from your side so for the next video stay tuned to this channel